come this way. In this video, we're going to show you an alternate method using electrolysis to remove both paint and rust from an antique part. Here's our subject part today. You can see in here it's got a lot of rust. It's another case of putting primer right over rust. You don't want to do that. So we're going to remove all this primer and all the rust using a different formula and method of electrolysis to do this. Now hopefully you've already watched our first video that shows you an acid-based method. And that has purposes because you may want to plate something, for example. You definitely have to go that way. In this method, we're going to turn all that rust into iron oxide, a black iron oxide, which we'll then have to rinse and wipe off a bit. But it would not be the type of thing you'd want to use for plating, but it's a perfect basis for doing something that you're going to paint. And we're going to paint this part anyway. We're going to show you how to do this in the home shop. One thing that you're going to need is a larger piece of steel in this case. And I would recommend a larger piece of steel. You could use steel wire. I've known people to do that. But the reason we want a larger piece of steel is we're going to suspend the entire piece of steel into our bucket. And as you can see, today I've got a five gallon bucket that we're going to use. And we're going to use some spring clamps to suspend the piece of steel in the bucket. In our bucket here, we're going to have about four and a half gallons of water. We'll show you that later. Right now I'm going to take my positive lead. The positive lead is going to go to the piece of steel in this method. That's heading on up there to my bus bar. That's my positive bus bar, hence red for positive. So you want positive to your piece of steel for this method. Here are the two items you're going to need to put in the water for this process to work well. We're going to use used, that is used Arm & Hammer fridge and freezer baking soda. Obviously they're not any good once you're using the fridge so you might as well use it for something like this. My wife saves these. You have to cut it with a knife to get it open but you'll want about two tablespoons of your Arm & Hammer baking soda and you're going to want a scoop of Tide. <clears throat> In this case, Tide tends to work better than other detergents, just the chemical composition apparently, but the two of these work well together in this process. So about two tablespoons of your baking soda and one scoop of Tide for your container. Alright, I've cut my old container of baking soda apart. I've already put a little in there. I'm going to put in the second amount. And this is bigger than a true tablespoon, so put a bunch of that in there. Now, remember I said you're going to put a scoop of this in. No, you don't want the whole scoop. See, there's a little measurements down here. If you get something close to the one, and there is a one down here, close to the one will be enough. That's all you're going to need for this. The purpose behind these two items is to provide a solution that is on the basic side as well as providing material into the water so that the water becomes totally conductive. So that's why you're using these two products and yes I'm recommending these by name. This can be used, it will still work. You can use the rest of this to do your laundry. Now we have our headlight bucket here, which I didn't mention to any of you. This is for a Hupmobile Aerodynamic that we start working on slowly. And I'm putting it through the screw hole. The thing that's important here with this piece, and what this is, this is a piece of copper wire out of a piece of Romex, is that we get a good electrical connection. So I've done a little bit of scraping and a little filing to get where hopefully we'll have a good electrical connection with this. If we don't, we'll do a little bit more work. But you want a good electrical connection, nice piece of copper wire like this is going to work. And you're going to end up suspending your part in the liquid. Now the big important thing is remember you do not want the piece of steel and your part to touch. So we're going to keep them separated. And I've got a 
piece of wood here that I'm going to hang it from. This is another reason for using the piece of Romex, because then I can kind of hang the thing up and adjust its height by using the Romex and the piece of wood. So now I've got it in here and I've got it separated. We are not touching between the part and the steel. And we're ready to put our negative side right there on the part. So we're running negative to the part in this case. You will note we're using six volts and about three quarters of an amp. You can use a 12 volt battery charger and use the two amp charge setting equally as well. Here we have our subject at the two hour point. And you can see we have a tremendous amount of the paint beginning to flake off. You can also see rust is removed from some of the areas that were just plain rusty before. So we're gonna take this down and just use a stainless steel kitchen scrubber and clean it off in the shop sink and put it back in. So as I said, that's about two hours and it's done this. And I think an awful lot of that paint's gonna come off right when we go to the shop sink. All right, here you see our part pretty much just wiped off with the scrubber. I didn't have to scrub hard on anything. You can see large portions of the paint come off. You can also see that some of this really wasn't rusty bad underneath, but other spots were, but an awful lot of rust is gone. Also, very easy now by comparison. I couldn't get these nuts off these screws previously. I just took the one off. Let's see how this one does. And now it comes off just fine. Before, if I had done this, you would find that I would basically just destroy the screw because it's a flat blade screw back in 1935, slotted of course. And now I can take off the useless mount that's here for the electric connections. And I do have another one that I'm gonna put on here eventually. But it allows you to take things apart you couldn't otherwise take apart because it is getting rid of the rust everywhere, right down in those screw threads. So we're going to put it back in now and continue on. So that's about two hours. I'll show you the back side. Remember, the inner side is the side we've had facing, so more activity is going to go on here. We may later on flip this side towards our piece of steel in order to improve the outside removal a lot more. Here we have our finished subject part. Some things to note, first of all. You see all these holes? Well, they didn't form during the de-rusting process. I didn't show them to you in the first place. Some of them were basically flaked off spots. And some were out and out open completely because these were never taken care of by whoever started working on this. Inside, we can see what's going on here. In this area, you can see this must have sat with water in about like that. And with these holes filled in with their components, as a consequence, the water would sit and you got all this pitting and stuff and you've got stuff that's gone clear through. But as I said, that didn't get worse because of this particular de-rusting process or we would have enlarged the real holes here and caused problems. No, that didn't happen from that. That's the way it was. They never worked on it. But you can see the finished item here. This is about 12 hours and it's taken out I believe three different times where I rinsed it off and pretty much wiped it off not scrubbing hard with a scotch bright pad not until it was all done did I go through and use some mechanical scotch brighting and wire brushing to get the last little bits off mostly really it was just surface rust forming because I didn't get it dried as fast as I should have 
You really want to boil these things dry when you're done because you're using, obviously, water, basically, which is going to cause the surface to rust again. But you can see the results of this. It's kind of beautiful what could be done. It's not a surface that's the surface I would be doing, as I told you, for plating, but it is a surface that's going to paint beautifully. And obviously, I'm going to have to go through and fix all these little holes, make them shut, but we will be able to restore this headlight bucket to use. I'm not going to worry about making the inside you know, all smooth and beautiful. That's all covered up. It's the outside that does matter. We don't want water, etc. getting back in there. And this is all the stuff you could actually see on the car. So now you have another way you can de-rust with electrolysis. And as you notice, I call them both Frankenstein methods. That's because we're using the electricity to do it. But this one can be done for you by somebody who wants to get rid of the rust and the paint. And I will tell you that about 95% of that paint was off. There were just few little spots, and most of it would just flake off if I ran something you know, metallic against it. It was very easy to remove the rest of it. But this is a nice thing you can do where you don't have to sandblast, and you can see it's kind of dirty, you gotta wipe it off now. Uh, but you don't have to sandblast to do this, and you pretty much leave it alone for the most part once it's in the solution. Give it a try. I think you're going to think that's a pretty nifty way to get things cleaned up and have some good results without having to break out a sandblaster or take it to somebody else.